Okay, we're, we're live on camera. Okay, so I get this a lot, like people are afraid to say what they're cancelling, because if they say it, they think they might reinforce it. You know, like, um, and, you know, like if I say I cancel my belief, uh, I cancel my belief sugar is bad for me. Uh, I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. Right. By saying the word sugar is bad for me, maybe that's bad for me. And I shouldn't reinforce that sugar is bad for me. So maybe just avoid saying sugar is bad for me. But no, I, I, I totally uh, don't go along with that. The, the frame I'd say is like, intention is very, very powerful. You know, and, and, and calling on grace, calling on the Holy Spirit, calling on God is extremely powerful. And also, it was mentioned, you know, this idea of not saying things and, uh, and then they'll go away by never ever saying it and just positive thinking, um, I would say is not, uh, would, I don't I believe it would work. Because you've got to like, you know, a lot of things are unconscious, a lot of things are at the level, the karmic level. Um, and you've got to get in touch with that and then whatever process you, you use to release it. But, you know, it, it's known for centuries that prayer is very powerful. You, one doesn't really pray, I'm happy, clappy, and then you, you're enlightened. You've got to, like, find out all the limiting blocks and offer them up to the universe to be transcended or to be cancelled or ask God for help with them. You know, even in the 12 steps, you know, you wouldn't say, you know, 12 steps, I'd say the four, the four defects of character in the 12 steps would show uh, framed on the seven deadly sins, you know, like if you just had Christianity and you didn't mention the seven deadly sins because you'd, they'd all be saved, or in the Twelve Steps we never mentioned the defects of character because then we wouldn't have them, you know, so selfishness, dishonesty, uh, fear, or, you know, the seven deadly sins, you know, uh, gluttony, uh, lust, pride, wrath, you know, so Asking God, you know, uh, you know, asking for a miracle for my wrath to be removed rather than never saying the word wrath. I mean, inviting grace and God to remove something that you're aware is extraordinarily pow powerful. Now, for, I would say for an agnostic or an atheist who doesn't believe in divine grace doesn't, or just believes their personal ego is the only thing at, at, at force, then saying, please remove... I mean, I'm also a hypnotherapist, so I can understand the agnostic, um, atheist point of view. You know, so then it would be the thing of, well, if I say the word, I'm crazy, over and over again, that would seem like that's a bad thing to do, you know. Say, if you're an atheist and you don't believe in divine intervention, or you're, you're the only thing in the world, it probably is a bad thing to do. But you're asking the infinite universe to remove something. That, that you know, that's so powerful. You don't have to worry about it. You know, here the thing, the thing with asking God to remove something that's limiting within your ego so you can be one with that truth is extraordinarily powerful. You don't need to, you know, you'd miss out on God, the Holy Spirit, and divine grace because you don't want to say that word and ask for support around it. So, also the thing is, like, let's take the Course in Miracles. All my thoughts are meaningless, but to make something meaningless, I have to label it and make it, I have to work on it to make it meaningless. So I can't pretend not, not to say it because it's still there. You know, if I find donuts meaningful, if I never say the word donut again, it's, I'm still going to have meaningful donuts in me. I don't know if that makes sense. So uh, I haven't really, I haven't, you know, just by saying donut, donut, you know, you'd have the idea that if I said donut, 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 I'd get more donut mad. But actually, if I pray for miracles, if donuts are just as meaningless, like the Course in Miracles, donuts are as meaningless as l the lamp, which is as meaningless as the plant. And so you're stripping away that meaning. So, like in 12 steps, people get afraid of saying, uh, hello, my name's Sabir, I'm an overeater. You know, I'm not afraid of it, because when you make something meaningless, it's meaningless. You're not afraid of a word. The word has no power because it's meaningless. Like, if, if someone said to me, like, say that, uh, I don't know, say that I'm a kettle. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a kettle, or say that I'm a, a mug. 
for 24 hours and I'll give you a million pounds. I might do that, you know. I'm not afraid to say, like, if I'm a mug, I'm a mug, I'm a mug, I'll turn into a mug the next day. It's like, it's a meaningless word. The fear of the word mug, you know. But when you make it meaningless, you can say the word and it has no power over you. You know, so it's the words, it's the, it's the projected meaning, the specialness. Uh, and if you're afraid of the specialness of a word, then as, as soon, after you make it meaningless, it has no power. Does that make sense? Because mm. once you're in the infinite, when you're in the, in, if, you're in, if you transcended the, the meaning of the word donut, you know, you're no longer scared of it. It's like taboo, don't, don't make me say donut because I'll be re-identified with donuts. It's meaningless now, yep. Um, yeah, it's kind of really enjoyed and have resonated with a lot of what you're saying. And I'm in a 12-step group as well and I can sense that I've had difficulty since I've been in with the, the first affirmation that, that you shared there of, yeah. hi, my name is, and I'm a compulsive overeater, for example. And I know a lot of people who have also struggled with that. And something that I hadn't actually put words to is this idea that well, that's because we're giving it meaning. Yeah. So it's a meaning, and, and, and in your example, well, that's when it's became meaningless, so therefore you can detach from that. And I think until you've done the 12-step the work, for me, I would just say in personal experience, the, the phrase to say that is a, so the meaning of association of being an overeater, for example, would be shame, would be guilt, would be feeling of failure, or these sort of aspects. So there is there's meaning to that. So I guess, and and in the instance where you talked about I cancel my beliefs that sugar is bad for me, there is still power just for, for me personally in this example with the word sugar. So along with doing the cancelling beliefs, it's it's kind of cancelling or surrendering the meaning around those words. Yes. And for me, at the moment in early days, that almost seems like it would be separate practice, which I'd love, I think, a full process of surrender is just to surrender all the meaning to, to the word as you're saying it, and I'll definitely start to try and get in the process of that. But for me at the moment, if I haven't thought or conceived to hand over the meaning of compulsive overeater, alcoholic, X, Y, and Z, or hand over the meaning and power behind sugar, for example, then that's, I think, with the fear of the, the reinforcement that I described in my question of sort of I'm afraid to reinforce those things because I'm giving them power. So when I'm saying I cancel my belief that this powerful thing yeah. doesn't do something, well, then I'm in a bit of a wrestle because I'm saying a thing that I'm still giving power. So I need to kind of surrender that power over to the, the spirit that I'm making my prayers to as well. To sort of, yeah, and that'll be part of my... Um, well, you can, like, all, all of those things, you can, you can take the meaning out of all the side associations with it. You know, like it's shameful to eat donuts. Uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> I cancel my belief it's shameful to eat donuts. So I cancel my belief that people seeing me binging on donuts is uh, shameful. I'm an infinite being. You know, when I've had, I've had a white light spiritual experience, it's like as you get into the states of light, into the infinite nature, the infinite now, like all of these limited ideas dissolve. You know, you're just dissolving those limited ideas. So, like if someone said to me, say, gaga, gaga, goo goo, you know, it's not, it's like, I'm not afraid to say gaga, you know, because it has no meaning for me. I don't think I'll become a baby. So <laughs> gaga, <laughs> gaga. Like, say gaga non-stop for 24 hours, like I'm not afraid, because it's totally meaningless, you know, I'm not going to identify with that as being, having any power. So me saying I'm an overeater, I used to eat, overeat on donuts, I used to binge out on donuts. You know, it doesn't, I'm not scared of the word donuts or admitting that I was a food addict. You know, I don't have any shame about it. Like you know, I used to binge on donuts, bananas, all kinds of foods. So it's like you know, I'm happy to sort of say it. it's like there's no, oh my God, I've just said it. I, I binged on donuts. Like I have to run out of here and go to a donut shop. There is one very near here actually. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, okay, better not say that in this room. But uh, <laughs> yes, I know some people are suffering from that stuff. But um, yeah, so the yeah, yeah I've got a okay. 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 Thanks very much. Yeah. Thanks for so, so the, the, the meaning, yeah, so the meaning, uh, let go of the meaning, it's not, you know, asking, asking for a miracle is so powerful, you know, asking for grace. It comes from a limited concept of, an, of a, I'd say more from the atheistic point of view of the power of words, you know, because if I'm an atheist and there is no God, there is no grace, there is nothing beyond the ego, uh, then it makes sense. 
like if I say I'm mad, oh, I'll become more mad, you know. Like, you know, there isn't any God out there or any intervention or any grace, anything beyond my ego. So it does sound like uh, a thing. And it's probably in a lot of self-help books. Hypnotherapists would probably do that unless they have a spiritual um, connection. They'd probably tell you, like, avoid using that or just think positive. Mm. But, you know, how can you release the shadow if you don't, like, own it and mm. then take it mm. to the light? Yeah. You know, like, if I just pretend I haven't got a shadow yeah. side. <clears throat> So, um, yeah. yeah.